Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at a handful of new features that are currently in development for Windows 11 and are expected to launch at some point this year. These features are on the way, they're yet to be announced or released, but they are in development and can be enabled in the latest Windows 11 preview builds. Uh, and so yeah, let's just take a look at some of the more interesting stuff Microsoft is currently working on for updates to Windows 11 throughout the year. Uh, up first, we have the start menu, and there's quite a big update coming to the start menu this year, uh, specifically with the apps list. So Microsoft has been working on a feature similar to the app shelf on iOS or iPadOS, where the apps list is actually just an automated categorized view of your installed apps. So as you can see here, uh, all of my installed apps have automatically been grouped into these different folders. Uh, you can't change or edit the names of these. These are just automatic. They are AI or machine learning, whatever Microsoft is going to call it, but it's done by the system. So it will take a look at every app you have installed and try to best categorize it. And if it can't find a category, it will throw it into other. So as you can see here, we have utilities and tools, productivity, creativity, games, business, and other. And if we click into any of these, you'll see a sort of folder view of all of the apps that are in there. So you can see all my utilities and tools here. We can also go into productivity and see all of the apps that are classed under productivity. We can go down to other and see what wasn't categorized into something. And in here, you can even see subfolders. So you can click into subfolders within here as well, which is really nice. And all the animations here are very smooth as well. It's pretty polished for a feature that is yet to be announced. So that's pretty nice to see. And you can also see up here, we can change the view. So this is the category view, but you can also go to a new named grid view, which is a basically an alphabetical list of your apps, but in grid view versus the list view, which is what we currently have on Windows. Windows 11 today. So you can go back to the old style if you prefer, but I think a lot of people will prefer this new sort of AI-ified layout, which is quite nice. And if you come to the right here, you'll see this um, phone companion. This feature is still in testing. It will be rolling out very soon, but it allows you to sort of see an overview of your phone's information. You can see I'm currently connected via phone link. I have Bluetooth enabled. Uh, I have my battery percentage and the fact that my phone is charging, as well as my quick, quick access to messages, calls and photos, and recent uh, messages and photos down here as well. I can also send files directly to my phone by clicking on this, which will pop up a little window, which allows me to just drag a file into here and send it directly to my device, which is really quite handy. There's also this mini menu here, which will allow you to customize what recent activity shows up in the companion, as well as start settings to turn on or off the... Um, the phone link sidebar if you don't want to see it there. Okay, up next we have some updates to the system tray. If we come down to the battery indicator, you'll see that it looks a little bit different. Microsoft is, is updating the battery indicator to be a lot more uh, dynamic and uh, more useful. You can see we have a new battery percentage uh, indicator here, which you can now enable, as well as a different color to the actual battery icon itself when we're charging or in energy saver mode. So you can see currently I am charging and so the icon is green. Uh, and if I unplug from my charger, you'll see the icon just sort of returns to a normal white color. Um, it is a little bit longer than it used to be. I'm not sure why they've made that decision, but it is a tiny bit longer. Uh, and now, obviously, when you plug it in, it will change colors and be a little bit more obvious when something is happening to it. If we right click and go to power and sleep, you'll see that we have the option here to turn on and off the battery percentage. If we turn it off, it looks just like so, uh, but we'll keep it on for this demo because that is what's new. Now, if we move over to the left here, you'll see another new button. This is the emoji panel. Microsoft is adding an emoji icon to the taskbar. And if you click on it, it will open up the emoji panel. So if you're familiar with this, this won't be anything out of the ordinary. Uh, this has been part of Windows 11 for a very long time. However, as far as I'm aware, discoverability of the feature is quite low because it requires a keyboard shortcut to access usually the Windows key and the period button. But uh, now they're adding a button directly to the taskbar to make it more discoverable. So you can see here, if you click on it, it will simply pull up the emoji panel and you can go to, through all your different emojis here, which is pretty fun. And you can even get access to your clipboard if you use that through here as well. Um, now, there are a couple of options for this feature. If we go to system tray settings, you'll see the emoji and more button. And if we go to the options, we have the options for always, while typing and never. So if you don't want to see the emoji button on the system tray, you can turn it off or you can make it so it only appears when you're typing into a field. So if we open up, say, notepad here, you'll see in the system tray now that I am active in this text box, 
the emoji panel has appeared. So I can say my typing and then I can go down here and go, hey, let's add that. And now that is part of it. And now if I close this and then after a few seconds, you'll see it disappears like so, which is really quite handy. Now, another change they're adding to the taskbar is a new option for shrinking the icons when the taskbar gets too full, or you can just have it on constantly. So currently you can see here, show smaller taskbar icons is currently set to when taskbar is full. These are the normal size icons here. But if we go in here and switch it to always, you'll see all of the icons shrink and they're now much smaller on the taskbar. And so there's a lot more room for additional icons. Uh, the actual taskbar size itself doesn't shrink. It's just the icons, at least currently. I'm not entirely sure if they're going to update the taskbar to do the same, but for now at least, um, it's just the icons. So you can fit more icons into the taskbar at once. And I believe by default, it's set to when taskbar is full. So if you, you know, in pin or install or have lots of running apps in the taskbar at any one time, uh, the icons will shrink once you run out of space so you can have a few more icons pinned or added if you need them, which is quite handy. Okay, another feature Microsoft is working on is a new interface for sharing files. This is supposed to make the sharing process a lot more streamlined. Uh, currently, the only way to really share a file is to select one like so and press the share button or right click and press the share button in the context menu. But with an upcoming update, Microsoft is introducing a new sharing method just by grabbing the file and dragging it to the top of your screen. From there, you'll get a list of apps that you've most recently shared to, and then you can just select the app and drop it, and it will share straight to that app. So it's a much faster way of sharing files. Just simply go to the top of the screen, bang, and you're sharing a file like so, which is really quite handy. Now, another feature Microsoft is working on is the ability to customize which widgets appear on the lock screen. Up until now, that wasn't customizable, but in an update coming this year to Windows 11, you will be able to adjust what appears here. So if we scroll down, you can see Microsoft is giving us the option to enable and disable the widgets and choose which widgets actually appear there. So this is the default set, and if we lock the computer, you will see that we have these widgets uh, appearing along the bottom of the screen. And if I want to customize them, I can log into Windows or I can click the ellipsis here and go to manage widgets, which will then take me back into the settings app where I can customize this layout. So if we take a look here and we want to move some of these around, I want to move sports to the very front. So I just drag that to the top and I want widgets to be at the very back. And in fact, I don't want traffic. Traffic doesn't need to be there. I can get rid of it and the entire settings app will close. But that's fine because if we lock the computer, you'll see that nothing has changed and everything is the same as it was before. <laughs> Why? Oh, there we go. It has updated. Perfect. So <laughs> actually, these are still in development features, so bugs will occur. But you can see the layout has finally updated and now we can go back into manage widgets uh, and customize this further. So if we scroll down a bit more, we can add different widgets here as well, including third party widgets. So this battery meter is a third party widget, which we can add to the list. Uh, we can even add more than that. So if we scroll down a bit more and add, say, the countdown widget, which is a first party widget by Microsoft, uh, you'll even see there's an option to customize it there, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then if we go back and lock it here, you'll see that we should now have, um, well, <laughs> once again, it hasn't done as it's told. Oh, there we go. So there we go. We've got the battery meter, which is, as I mentioned, that third party widget. And there's a little arrow here, which you can now click to move to the next page where the additional widgets are. So these are some big updates coming soon to the lock screen, allowing you to customize the widgets on Windows 11. And that is pretty nice. Now, another little feature I quickly wanted to highlight is Microsoft has updated the Windows Hello idents and they're a little bit cuter and a little bit more fluid now, as you can see, uh, it's pulling a straight face here because it didn't recognize me. But uh, if I authenticate successfully, it will give me a nice smiley face with a check mark as well as the Microsoft logo, which I think is a cute um, little bit of detail there. So there we are, that's a quick look at some of the big changes that Microsoft are currently working on for Windows 11 this year. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.